And now stay tuned for the program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things. For I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Night Flight. It was early evening, but the man sitting in the corner booth with Kelly Owen had entered the hotel cocktail lounge in the early afternoon, and he was beginning to show it. He'd taken a liking to Kelly when he found out that he, too, was a flyer. As for Kelly, he wasn't in a mood for liking anyone. But his present situation of unemployment made him more than mildly interested in what the stranger had to say. You even find yourself willing to gamble a bit, don't you, Kelly? Spend part of the few dollars in your pocket on more drinks in the hope that you'll pick up some profitable information. Yes, yeah, Tokyo. <laughs> if I ever made that hop. <laughs> Pal, I've flown freight back and forth across the Pacific so many times I think I could swim a load over on my back. <laughs> Here you are, gentlemen. One oh, straight yeah. bourbon and one scotch and soda. I swell. It's a dollar thirteen. I get this one, Sam. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, wait, hey, wait a minute. What'd you do that for? I told you old Sam had hit the jackpot. All right, skip it. Ollie, uh, uh, you, you didn't finish telling me, Sam, something about a private deal? <laughs> I, 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 I can't tell you everything, pal. It's too important. Yeah? Hush, hush, understand? <laughs> important passenger. Big. Oh, that's it, huh? Well, a big fare is nice, Sam, but not like what you were talking about. Not, not enough to retire on. I think not, eh? <laughs> Don't you think 25 G's go pretty far, don't you? 25 thousand? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Sam, who do you know that's taking a private trip around the world? I don't know. And they don't know me. That's why you ain't going to know me either. Nobody is. All right, Sam. Yeah, sir. Talking too much. Ooh. I don't feel so good. A lot to drink. Yeah, you sure have. Hey, look, I... Uh... I gotta go upstairs, see, to my room, pal. I gotta sleep it off. I can't, can't fly no plane like this. <laughs> what you are, you can fly without a plane. Yeah. <laughs> you are, Sam. Yeah, Help you yeah, upstairs. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> thanks, thanks. Oh, hey, hey, hey. You you tell the desk clerk for me, will you, huh? Go, go, go. Tell, tell him what? Yeah, you to call me about uh, about 10 o'clock. They're, they're picking me up here in a car. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll tell him. Yeah. Come on upstairs. Yeah, you know, it looks so good. Well, Sounded interesting, didn't it, Kelly? $25,000, Sam said. And something about it being his payment for flying an important passenger somewhere. But all too vague to be of any use to a man in your position. By the time you help Sam upstairs to his room, lay him on the bed, he's fallen into a deep sleep. And instead of $25,000, you're thinking of the dollar thirty you spent, aren't you? A dollar thirty that might have gone towards a better hotel room for the night. And then you think of something else. Yes. You're helping yourself to the contents of Sam's wallet as the phone near the bed rings. Sam stirs restlessly and you lift the receiver quickly to prevent waking him. Mr. Ledford. Hello. Mr. Ledford, there's someone here to see you. Mr. Ledford? Someone here to see you. The words flash across your mind, don't they, Kelly? 
And you recall something that Sam said downstairs in the bar? I don't know him, he said. They don't know me. But it wasn't until ten o'clock that the somebody was to meet Sam in the lobby. Was it, Kelly? Mr. Ledford? Mr. Ledford? Why don't you answer? Uh, hello? Oh, Mr. Ledford, there's someone waiting for you in the lobby. Should I tell the lady to come up? Uh, no, no, no. I'll tell the lady that, uh, that Sam Ledford will be right down. Yes, sir. <laughs> It's a chance, isn't it, Kelly? A chance you've decided to take. And with Sam Ledford's wallet, identification, and pilot's license in your coat pocket, you let yourself out of his room and go downstairs. There's a girl in the lobby, a dark-haired, very attractive girl. She's alone, waiting impatiently. Miss, uh, Miss Martin? Yes? You wanted Sam Ledford? And supposing I did? Well, uh... You don't have to look any further. Oh, well, I, I didn't realize. That's okay. I suppose you're ready, Sam. Oh, I didn't expect anybody until uh, 10 o'clock. <laughs> well, that's right. Well, um, quite frankly, when I talked to you on the telephone, you sounded like you just might be in the mood for too much celebrating, but... Um... Oh, that's so? <laughs> that's why I came earlier, Sam. I know $10,000 is something to celebrate, but... You're uh, uh, awful little there, aren't you, Miss Martin? I understood I got 25000 for this job. <laughs> All right, Sam, so we won't bargain anymore. Not at this late date. Okay. You, uh, you won't mind leaving now, though? Anything you say, Miss Martin, now, later, you're running it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad we understand each other. All right, Sam, there's a cab outside. Wait for me. I've got one quick call to make. Uh, wait in the cab. Okay, Miss Martin. You, you won't be long, will you? No, Sam, I won't be long. You've a nervous, uncertain feeling inside, haven't you, Kelly? Miss Martin seems to have accepted you as Sam Ledford. But walking out to the taxi cab parked in front of the hotel, you wonder about her reference to a quick call. Wonder if perhaps the call is in some sort of a checkup with whoever made the original arrangements with the real Sam Ledford. But there's nothing to do but sweat it out, is there, Kelly? Play it close and careful for the biggest payoff you've ever gambled on. Ten minutes later, Miss Martin comes out. Flips into the cab beside you. Everything, uh, all right? Yes, yeah, Sam, everything's fine. Know where we're heading now? <laughs> Like I said, uh, you're running this. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I think we're going to get along perfectly. Driver, the airport, please. You understand everything now, Sam? I think so. Be sure you rent at least a three-place ship. And make certain of the fuel. You, uh, you haven't uh, told me yet exactly how far oh, we're... Never mind. I'll tell you that part after we're in the air. Huh, check. You're not coming with me? I'll wait here till you get the plane. Tell them you want it for a sightseeing hop over the city. Tell them I'm the girlfriend. The girlfriend, huh? Okay. <laughs> It's going almost too well, isn't it, Kelly? Zela Martin is a warm, exciting girl, and the thought of $25,000 isn't exactly chilly. But you are nervous over what's just ahead, aren't you? The renting of the plane in Sam Ledford's name. It has to be done that way, just in case Zela should check at the last minute. You cross toward one of the rental hangars, hoping whoever's in charge doesn't know you or Sam Ledford. But nothing goes wrong. Twenty minutes later, you escort Thela from the cab to the warm-up apron, where a mechanic is readying a trim Fairchild job. You help Thela into the front seat. You step back as the mechanic finishes the warm-up. Nice clear night for sightseeing, hot miss. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks, I'm sure I will. You're in good hands, all right. Understand Sam Ledford's taking you up. Yes, that's right. You hard. freeze at the mechanic's words, leap back toward the tail of the ship, trying to avoid him. Thela can't see either of you, can she, Kelly? But the mechanic is waiting between you and the door to the ship. 
And then, in absolute desperation... Hey! Yeah? Is, isn't there something wrong with this tail assembly? Wrong? I don't think so, Mr. Ledford. Would you... Hey, what is this? You're not Mr. Yeah. Ledford. Sorry, pal, but I got a date with 25,000 bucks. And nobody's getting in my way. I'm sure, friends, you're glad that although this is the season when so many popular shows go off the air for the summer, there'll be no vacation for the Whistler program. Thanks to your loyalty to The Whistler, which has made this the most popular West Coast program in radio history, plus your loyalty to Signal Dealers, which made this last year the greatest year in Signal history. Signal Oil Company is keeping The Whistler on the air all summer without interruption. So each Sunday evening throughout the summer, when you turn to this spot on your radio dial, you can depend on finding your favorite mystery. Just as each time you turn into a Signal station... You can depend on finding a friendly, independent dealer to serve you with fine quality signal products, including the famous Go Farther gasoline. Signal, signal, signal gasoline. Your car will go far with Go Farther gasoline. You've managed every step, haven't you, Kelly? Every one since the telephone rang in the sleeping Sam Ledford's room. The moment when you decided to take his place with the unknown air passenger who would pay $25,000 for a single mysterious flight in a rented plane. The last step was a dangerous one, wasn't it? Knocking out the mechanic at the airport, a man who realized that you weren't Sam Ledford. But it's going to be all right, isn't it, Kelly? And as you level out high above the twinkling lights of the city, you glance over at Thela in the seat beside you. Well, Thela, you said once we were in the air. Yes, I know. All right, Sam, we fly almost due south to a spot near Rosarita Beach. Across the border? Yes. There's a landing strip there. We'll sit down, wait. Been a lot of waiting. You're getting a lot of money. Yes, so I am. All right, Thela, settle back. Grab a few winks if you like. I'll wake you up at Rosarito Beach. Thela? I think they're here. Car just pulled off the highway. All right. Get back to the plane. If it's them, they'll flash the headlights off and on. I'm to answer with a flashlight. Check. Sheila? Yes? You're sure you don't want to tell me who this guy is? Use your head, Sam, if you want to keep it. We're across the border, aren't we? We're flying him back to the States in the dead of the night. Doesn't that say enough? $25,000 says enough. And by the way, we're not taking him back to that airport, you Of know. course not. We've got a spot all picked out on the desert. There's a car waiting, everything. Yeah. Everything. Even you. Get that man. And remember, not a word to him during the flight. Just keep your mind on your flying. Oh, sure. Oh, there go the car lights over there. Yes. Go on, Sam. Back to the plane. I'll answer them. Mr. Ledford. Wait. What for? I'm flying back with you. We'll return the plane. Yeah, but I got him into the States now. What about my money? You'll get your money, Mr. Ledford. Just do as you're told. But... I said do as you're told. What about this guy, Thela? Look, Nick, this plane has to go back and be set down from where it took off, and two sightseers have to get out of it. You don't want to leave any trace. Sure, sure. All right, 
fly boy? You wait for the lady, huh? Uh, look, I, I, I'd like to go into town for a little while. Why? I, I didn't mention it, but I was having a little trouble. A fuel line, I'd, I'd feel safer if I could ride in and buy some stuff for it. What do you think, Phil? Is it necessary, Mr. Ledford? Very necessary, Mrs. Martin. The plane won't be safe otherwise. Nick, I'll be flying back with him. All right. So he goes into town. Come on. You had to think fast, didn't you, Kelly? You know you can't take the plane back to the airport where you picked it up, posing as Sam Ledford. The mechanic you knocked out will have revived, reported the theft. And yet they've told you that you won't get your money until the plane is returned. You need time, don't you, Kelly? Time to think it out, decide what to do. And as you sit beside Sela and the big guy in a chauffeur-driven limousine that met you when you landed, a plan begins to take shape in your mind. In town, you go through the motions of buying what you need to repair the broken fuel line, and then wait as the big guy gets into the limousine and is driven off toward the highway. You get everything you needed, Sam? Oh, yeah, yeah, all set. Well, then we might as well get back to the plane. Oh, what's the hurry? We can take a cab back anytime we want. Yes, only I, I thought you'd be sort of anxious to take off. Oh, an hour or so won't make much difference. Yeah, I, I, I was uh, going to suggest we have dinner. Well, there's a spot down the street a few blocks. The Palm Inn. Yeah, well, what are we waiting for? Sam. Yep. I've been wondering. If I was going to buy another brandy? Sure. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I was wondering about that 25000 What are you going to do with it? Oh, I don't know. Got a girl? Nope. Why? Oh, I don't know. Don't you ever think of the cottage small, white picket fence, roses around the door? Quit kidding, Sailor. Anyway, I'm not in the market for real estate. Yeah, so, uh, you're the big guy's girlfriend, huh? That's right, meaning... Nothing. All right, so he buys me everything I need. Well, have fun while you're young, I say. <laughs> you know something? I like you. I like you a lot, Eddie. Eddie? You're a little mixed up, aren't you? Eddie, Frank, Harry, Sam. What's the difference? What are you driving at, sweetheart? What is your name, really? Sam Ledford. Uh uh. You see, I closed this deal with Sam Ledford in person long before you showed up. Okay. So, where does that put us? It's up to you. You went along with a deal even though you knew I wasn't Ledford? I was in the market for a new pilot. Sam was too talkative. Besides, I like you. I like your nerves. Something for a girl to fall back on. Well, you're pretty okay in my book, uh... Kelly. First to last. Kelly Owen. Kelly Owen. I like that, too. Yeah, so let's get down to business now. Let's start with my 25 grand. So I'm not led for it, but I pull the job. I'm entitled to dough. Of course you are. And more. Oh? Uh, How would you like to split a hundred thousand dollars, darling? A hundred grand. Sound interesting? Very, very. Tell me more. <laughs> uh, let's get back to the plane. You have work to do. Uh, work? The fuel line, remember? Oh, oh, sure, yeah. But Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Was that fuel line really giving trouble? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweetheart, suppose you fill me in. The big guy was willing to spend 25 grand so long as he got back into the state. Yes, I know. Oh, I said to myself, why shouldn't little Sela pick up that dough after the job was done? Ah, double cross. So you knock off the pilot, keep the dough yourself. Why not? Go on. Well, when I saw you, another idea occurred to me. 
A way we could both get more than the 25000 And I'll need your help. My help, huh? Definitely. I knew that as soon as you walked up to me in that hotel lobby. What's the deal? Nasty word. Blackmail. Oh, real nasty. Mm. But keep talking. The big guy's in the States now, and he plans to stay. Only how much do you think it would be worth to him to keep the information from the police? You tell me. Another 75000 for a starter. So, how do we set this up? First, a little trip to South America for you. I always wanted to go there, too. I'll go on to join the big guy in New Orleans. He's rented a house there, 21 Rue Saint-Germain. And? And in about a month, he gets a letter from South America. Well, the blackmail pitch. He pays off or else. I like blackmail by long distance. <laughs> Much healthier. <laughs> well, Kelly, is it a deal? Yep. One more thing. How do I get to South America? Oh, that. Yeah, that. My 25 grand. I have it. You'll need, let's say, uh, 5,000 to get settled. You'll want a few thousand to spend, so I'll give you half now. 12,500. What about the other half? I'll hold on to it for the time being, just to be sure you don't double-cross me in South America. After you've clipped the big guy, we'll meet down there, and then... Well, you think you could stand to have me around, partner? <laughs> oh, give me time, sweetheart. I just might go to love you. <laughs> <laughs> Flying north along the coast, your mind is spinning, isn't it, Kelly? There's $25,000 in Sela's suitcase. And there will be another $75,000 once you reach South America and send the blackmail letter to the big guy. 100000 in all, Kelly. That is, if Thela doesn't double-cross you. After all, she was willing to double-cross Sam, wasn't she? Yes. And you decide quietly not to take a chance on her, to follow through alone now, not share the money with anyone, not even Thela. Darling, do me a favor. Sure. You have to fly over the water. It makes me nervous. Oh, what's your diff? Land the water. If you fall, you fall hard. Oh, please. Relax, Sheila. Say, uh, h- how do we address the big guy in New Orleans again? Nick Hughes, 21 Rue St. Germain. You won't forget it, will you, darling? No, no, I won't. Nick Hughes, 21 Rue St. Germain. No, I won't. Forget it! Your fist lashes out, catches Sheila on the point of the chin, and she slumps down in the seat. You reach over, open the door beside her. So long, sweetheart! It's over quickly, and you're alone in the plane with a full $25,000. You swing the nose around, head inland, and soon ease into a landing in an empty pasture not far from the highway. A truck driver gives you a lift into Los Angeles, where you spend the rest of the night in a quiet hotel. The following morning, you're downtown. First stop, the fashionable men's store. May I help you, sir? Yeah, shoot the works. I uh, beg your pardon? I tried out the best you got. Suits, sport outfits. I'm in the market for a complete wardrobe. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, this way. I'll need some luggage, too. That uh, light airplane stuff. Of course. You were planning a trip? Yeah, uh, South America. Uh, by the way, where's the nearest airline office? Uh, down the street, three blocks. However, if we may be of assistance, uh, that is to say, if you should care to use our telephone... No, no, thanks. I'll walk down after I finish here. Oh, uh, Mr. Knowles, this way, please. Best man in the store. He'll take care of you. Uh, thanks. I hope you have a pleasant trip and a most enjoyable stay in South America, sir. Thanks again. I'm sure I'll have a great time. Yeah, a great time. <laughs> A friend of mine was telling me last night that when he's eating out, he always chooses a restaurant that's crowded. They must have something, he says, to be so popular. Well, by the same token, Signal Gasoline must have something. When you consider that last month, drivers bought more gallons of Signal Gasoline than during any other month in Signal history. What is that something which accounts for such increasing popularity? 
Hmm? Some users tell us it's good mileage, which has made signal known throughout the West as the go-farther gasoline. Others say it's the life and pep and smooth, easy response they get with the gasoline that's engineered to help your motor run more efficiently. But frankly, friends, just as sure as my name's Marvin Miller, you're never going to know all the good reasons why so many drivers are switching to signal until you try a few tankfuls in your own car. Do it this week and see if you don't agree with me. You get a full, full measure of all the things that make driving more pleasure when you fill up with signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Signal, signal, signal gasoline. Your car will go farther, go farther gasoline. The future looks bright, doesn't it, Kelly? Very. And you're looking forward to your trip to South America. You're carrying close to 25,000 with you now, and this to be more. A great deal more. Once you reach Rio and set up your plan to blackmail the big guy who has entered the United States illegally. The following morning, the airline limousine picks you up at the hotel, takes you out to the airport. And then as you're checking your luggage... Mr. Owen? Kelly Owen? Yeah, that's right. I'm Lieutenant Dawson, L.A. Homicide. Huh. Homicide? Yeah. You bought a new wardrobe downtown yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Discarded the old suit you were wearing, left it at the shop? Sure. I, I, I told the clerk to give it to his favorite charity. So what? Well, you dropped something out of your wallet as you were transferring it to your new clothes. The clerk tried to catch it, but couldn't. Then when he noticed the name he'd seen in the papers, he called us. Hey, look, look, I don't follow this. Here's what the clerk found. Identification cards, including a pilot's license made out to Sam Ledford. Ledford? Yeah. Better turn in your plane ticket, Mr. Owen. You ain't going anywhere. Now, wait a minute. What's this all about? That's what we want to know. You see, Sam Ledford was found in a hotel room late last night. Dead. He'd been murdered. M murdered? Hey. Sila. Sila must have got him when she went... I have to make that call. You were carrying Sam Ledford's pilot's license around. I'm afraid that's one you'll never be able to explain, Mr. Owen. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as The Whistler, Lamont Johnson, Betty Lou Gerson, Bill Boucher, Byron Kane, and Jack Moyle. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. tune now for Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>